Yeah, we're doing basically a full hour of people from Wisconsin. <laughs> we had Jared Kelnick for about 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and now the Skipper's got service sitting down. Let's uh, talk about the Mariners. What is the best thing about camp this year? Ooh, um, I do not have to answer questions about being the longest professional sports organization without reaching the playoffs. That is the best thing about this camp. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is quickly uh, being pushed aside, and now it's about uh, getting our guys ready. Um, you know, we've talked uh, all off season. We uh, like our team. We've added some key guys that I think are really going to help. And now we're going to go out and do it. We're going to get in shape, get ready to go, and, and get ready to tee it up on uh, March 30th. How much differently do you manage this team from the start of this spring training to the team that you managed six, seven, eight years ago? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the process that we go through every spring, or I know myself and coaching staff, I'm really big on going back to ground zero, start over again, don't assume anything. Even though you now we, we do have, uh, you know, some – some of the same faces in here. You know, mm -hmm. we've built some trust with our players, and they understand the program. But don't assume anything. Uh, it goes back to the old Vince Lombardi principles. Mm -hmm. You know, you still gotta, you know, start with what got us here, and, and continue to harp on that about controlling the strike zone and things like that. So if that stays the same. I think the difference a little bit. You do have relationships with guys. You understand them a little bit more now. And I. I, I I will say it's nice to see our guys carrying themselves a little bit differently. And they should. We, we gained a ton of experience last year, and along with that comes a lot of confidence with how we played down the stretch. And, and you see that confidence walking out on the field every day. So our guys know where we're at. We know we need to continue to get better, and that's the focus. How many decisions do you need to make down here in terms of the roster and what that looks like? Well, I think it's much different than previous years. It seems like every year I've been here, you're always, oh, there's the fifth starter spot or there's there's different things in your bullpen or who's the utility guy going to be, who's going to win the, the different starting jobs. It, not so much this year. We have some competitions, and there's always surprises. You come into camp, and there's been three or four guys already. I'm like, whoa, this guy's going to help us. He may not be with us on March 30th, but he may be with us on May 1st, <laughs> you know, when things start to happen. You start settling with your team, and unfortunately, injuries happen, and, you know, there'll be opportunities for a lot of guys. So I like our depth. Uh, again, we've got to get him in shape, get him ready to go. Well, you, I, I, you used 59 players last year, so I, I, I do want to talk about some of that depth, et cetera. But you mentioned the fifth starter spot, and that does seem to be one of those competitions with two guys, both veterans, who've been around for a while. How are you going to make that decision? Well, I think it's something you don't have to make on February 28th. Yes. Uh, I think you let it play out throughout the spring. Uh, both guys will get stretched out. Um, they are starters in our mind. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out. You know, obviously with, with Marco, Marco's been a starter his whole career. Uh, that's where he fits in the starting rotation. Uh, Flex has done some different things. He could pitch out of the pen, you know, if it doesn't work with him in the starting rotation. And, and we'll make the, the best decision for our team to put the best 13-man pitching staff together. It gives us a chance to win early on in the season. Now, that may shift. That may change as the season goes on. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But February 28th, each of those guys have got one outing under their belt, and they've looked pretty good. Do you know who your opening day starter is? Uh, Are you prepared to name an opening day starter? Uh, you to me every, every year, Salky. It's February 28th. We'll see who how the outing goes today. Oh, today. <laughs> who's pitching today? Justin, remind me. Who's on the mound today? I just got to make sure. Is that the ace? Ah, oh, that would be the ace. Okay. No, Luis Castillo. The Rock. Oh, and I'm making that La Piedra. Up right yes. here. Yes. Okay, we're just checking. Yeah. He seemed pretty excited when he came out earlier. It's this Is there a pick. chance he could start opening day? There's a chance. Okay, just one. Yes. Okay, there you go. Fo Breaking news. Football coaches, Scott, have taught me over the years. I've asked him about tackling because they don't hit anymore, right? Mm -hmm. It's really hard to hit, and how can I judge and evaluate and project tackling? And they would say special teams is a great way they look at it. How do they cover a kick? How do they take angles on a punt? Like, it just kind of opened my eyes, defensive guys, on how they judge tacklers. How do you judge? What are the things that you look for between confidence and I've arrived? Confidence of, you know, you're, you're right. I said it to Sulk the other day. Like, man, it just feels different. There's like an aura. These guys know what they accomplished last year. But but they also know, and I'm sure are being challenged, that you haven't arrived. We haven't gotten to the ultimate goal. So how do you judge the difference between confidence and I've arrived? Yeah, I think, you know, I've never met a player that walks into this camp or walks on a major league field that doesn't, you know, feel like, you know, they have to feel like, you know, I'm the best player on the field, whatever. But then they, they may, it may be a little bit more of an act. And I think you find out about people when things aren't going so well. Mm -hmm. It's a guy that takes the 0 for 10 to start off spring training. Is there like, you know, wide-eyed, panic look in his eye? Or is it like, hey, man, I'm okay. I'll get there. I'll spend a little extra time with the hitting coach. So it's like how you handle a little adversity when it's not going your way. You know, is it is it fake or is it real? And real confidence is, ah, I got this. 
you know what I mean? And, and we, we continue to, to, to move in the right direction. But it, it, for me, it's just pretty like I, I hit on it all the time. You guys are probably sick of me saying it. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we did last year. We've got to focus on getting better, you know, and is it, is it, is it going to be able to take the next step or our next couple steps to get where we ultimately need to go? And, you know, I, I believe our team has come together so much in that clubhouse. And when you go through things like we did last year, you know, I go back to last year, the last, you know, we had that last road trip, which didn't go well. Seven on the last trip, we lose a 10 run lead, and you're like, oh my God, this thing could fall apart. The chicken Littles were falling everywhere. Oh, yeah, yes. you guys. Not you. Look, no, no. look at me. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at me. Yes. What are we doing? They're Jeez. Gonna go. But I mean, I thought it, the team could have been better managed during that. <laughs> I mean, other than that, everything's fine. the manager's fine. fault. Right. Sure we're clear That's on that. the only way yeah. people lose. That's, Teams lose is when the manager screws no it up. Question. With no this question. kind of talent, Brock? Yeah, it's it. But I think, you know, focus on getting better and what that's going to take and what's it going to entail. You have to be willing to push yourself, push the limits a little bit, and, and be uncomfortable. Because uh, if you just stay comfortable, we're probably going to get to where we need to go. Yeah. Who are some X factors for this year? Where if, if they have a great season, you guys are you know it's going to really work out. If they are don't. you serious with that question? <laughs> Give me some Come X on, factors. man! You guys have been talking about this for three months, and you're going to drop that on me on February 28th. You know so what you take is. a managerial shot. He's going to take a radio show. Yeah, <laughs> oh, just, like, yeah. oh my gosh! I wish I had your guys. Job. He's just mad at me because yeah, I was teasing. Say, we'll bring a service on here. What's going to be the He's mad at this? me because I was teasing him yesterday. Oh, uh -huh. Now he's all mad. No, he saw your tweet. You tweeted out Depoto striking him out. You oh, tweeted that out. I didn't tweet that. I heard that that's Every floating year around. Every that shows up at this time of year. <laughs> I'm just glad we got a, another person roasting salt today. Uh, what is going on? Sulfur. Everybody's it's killing me down here. Target. Is that <laughs> the case? Are you making a fat joke now? Thanks a lot. You brought it up. I did. <laughs> you brought it up. We were talking about some of these guys who... <laughs> Maybe they're not going to make the opening day roster. Wow, I was able to divert you that quickly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> A plus for me. But this I'm, is how you deal with the media. No, I'm right back. Okay, I I'm love right it. back to I'm right back it. to the question in another direction. This is the highlight of my day. Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> Go ahead, Soggy. You got some guys that might not make the might not make the opening day roster. Yes. Evan White who hit a home run yesterday. Mm -hmm. Casey Sadler who we've been watching. But when I think about using 59 players last year. You know, how important are some of those other guys, and who are some of them that, that maybe we're not talking about yet, but you're noticing them because they might be pretty valuable at some point over 162? Yeah, there, there's there's quite a few guys. Like I said, you know, you put them in that bucket. They are good enough to make our opening day roster. Will they or not? We'll see how it all plays out, but they will play a key role for us. And it's something I talked about in our opening meeting as I looked around the room, and you don't necessarily have to start the season with us to play a key role. And I turned around and I said, George, would you agree with that? <laughs> Because George Kirby was on our opening day roster last mm -hmm. year, and I think he played a pretty integral part to what we were able to accomplish. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but we do. You know, there's there's multiple bullpen arms that I think will help us at some point. Uh, God forbid you have injury, but it is probably going to happen. Somebody's going to go down at some point for whatever, hit by pitch, run into wall, whatever is going to happen. So you need to have some capable guys stepping in there. Uh, the fact that we have guys that can play multiple positions and move around the field is super valuable. Um, to me, and you don't, you're going to lose a little bit, but it's not like a complete total drop off, and now uh, you're just going a different direction with it. So we've got guys that can do a lot of different things there, and it gives an opportunity to look if something happens to Cal Raleigh or Tom Murphy, you know, who's going to be our third catcher? Who's the guy that can come up and fill in for 10 days or a couple weeks? You know, that's a real competition, you know, and watching how these guys handle the pitching staff and how they, different game situations that come up and, and whatnot, you know, it all matters. And, uh, you know, these kids, I think everybody comes to spring training, oh, it's relaxed, it's nice, you get, you know, the fans are out here, there's a certain vibe around this camp this year, you felt it, the people from Seattle that are down here, the expectations are higher. And, uh, you know, I, I think our players, to understand, like, our players are still, like, they're fighting for opportunity they're fighting to put themselves a little bit higher on the depth chart so even if they don't make the team out of spring they're in a great spot they go out to tacoma or they go to arkansas and they get off the good start and bam they're here before they know it and you take off from there i came in a little hot yesterday scott i'm not gonna lie i came in a little hot just to watch jared throwing medicine balls against the wall just athleticism it's combine week it, i was a little out of control <laughs> yesterday but I'm reminded 14 years ago, we, weird. we started the show in 2009, 14 years ago. In the first camp, I'm like, where are the buff dudes? Like, where are the athletes? Like, it was a bunch of dads in this clubhouse. Easy there, pal. And now I'm looking. <laughs> that's 14 years ago. It's before you got here. And now I'm looking at the caliber of athletes. And I'm looking at Jared and, and I'm looking at Julio. And they could go to the NFL Combine this week. And, and they would hold their own and more. Just the caliber of athleticism all across this board. Intentional, just the direction the game is going today, or 
you know, hey, this, yeah, this is, we fell into some of these, or it was just a very concerted, we have got to up our athleticism, the caliber of athlete. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, you know, and I, and I think it's by design. And I always think, like, do they look the part when they step off the bus? You know, that, that online. I think mm -hmm. we do. We do mm -hmm. look the part when we step off the bus. And, you know, you see the young pitchers walking around here, and, and, you know, it helps to be six foot four, 230 pounds. And even if you are only 22 or 23 years old, the projection is there on these guys. And you see young Harry Ford walk around. Harry Ford's put together. Yes. And we he saw just, that just turned 20 years old. You know what I mean? So the first box is checked. They look yep. the part. <laughs> yep. I think the filling in the other boxes takes a little time. Sure. And, uh, but credit to our players, uh, our strength and conditioning program, our whole HP program. They're really on top of these guys all year long. A lot of these guys have their own personal trainer they use in the mm -hmm. offseason, but in conjunction with what we're doing and communicating with those guys to understand these are your deficits. Let's address this in the offseason. You know, can you maybe shed a few pounds or maybe you redistribute your pounds <laughs> and what it looks like, you know, in a uni and then it's all tied to what helps them perform better on the field, of course. Right. It's not just looking good in the uni, but uh, it's lining up. We we got guys that look the part. We got some guys that are just great baseball players yep. and maybe don't look quite the part. Yep. And that works, too. Yep. That's the beauty of baseball. Yep. Um, you know, in the football, you know, the offensive lineman, you better you're, you better be this big. You better be this fast. You know, baseball, they come in all different shapes and sizes, mm -hmm. and, and that really is the beauty of it. We, a year ago, were probably asking you every five minutes about Julio. Is he going to make the team? What is he capable of this, that, and the other? <laughs> you get the incredible moment in your office where you told him that he had made the team, etc. And then we all got to witness just that magical ride last year of really learning about who this young player was. As he comes into camp this year, Brock and I found ourselves talking quite a bit about his, you know, what's ahead of him and some of the challenges that hit every single young potential superstar demands from all over the baseball world. The, the all-star game is going to be here this year. He's, he's charismatic. He's got the face of baseball kind of written all over him and top five in the league kind of potential. We also at the same time been pointing up at this board of legends up here and looking at Junior and Ichiro and thinking about how they dealt with it, mostly in positive ways. And the guy who's not on that board, Alex Rodriguez, who maybe didn't deal with it uh, necessarily in the most authentic of ways mm -hmm. as he grew into it. How do, how do you help Julio navigate what seems to me to be an incredibly challenging uh, river ahead of him? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a great point. Um, very drawn out. Sorry. The question, but yes. you did a hell of a job with it. <laughs> well, I was trying uh, to. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think, you know, it, it's real. Um, I, I think when you talk about young players like that and where he's at in his career, um, for the seat that I sit in, I just want to touch Julio every day. It may not be physically touched, but I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to get up close. I'm going to check in, and it's every day. Okay, and there'll be a time in maybe four or five years down the road where I'm not having or, or feel like I need to do that. But I think it's really important for young players. I mean, I got my eye on you. Like, make sure we stay on the right path. And, and he's done a fantastic job. And there has been a lot of things thrown at him. And, you know, we give him a hard time in the morning meetings about the commercials and what's going on there, which they're great. And he's good at it. And I think he enjoys it. That's why he's good at it. Mm -hmm. But like, we don't want to, like, I don't want to see. I love seeing Julio in those commercials because I know that when he comes to work the next day, it's going to be about what I need to do to get better today to make sure that I get off to a better start than I did last year. He can still really improve on last year's season, really improve. You know, he kind of got to the – things weren't going early. We talked a lot about how he didn't panic, and it turned around for him. Credit to him. Uh, but there's, there's areas uh, of growth for him um, all over the place, and that's what excites us most about him. That's why we gained the long-term commitment. We were sitting 10 feet from you yesterday at the ballpark. <laughs> Your reaction when Julio crashed into the wall was <laughs> what? Hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you move much in no, that. No, I had my eye on him, and then I came in, and uh, he says, oh, I'm fine. I said, I thought you were going to catch it, man. <laughs> and he said, oh, I'll catch that in Seattle. Don't worry about it. I got that T-Mobile. <laughs> and he gives me one of these. It's the no-fly zone. T-Mobile's the no I said, I know, Julio. T-Mobile's the no-fly zone. Uh, it was uh, unbelievable. He almost caught that ball. Uh, and, you know, you have to play the game. You can't worry about don't run into this wall or don't slide into this base. You have to go play the game. That's what makes – that's the beauty of Julio. It's it's uh, the innocence, the joy that he plays with, and they don't ever want to take that away. And, uh, you know, fortunately he didn't get hurt. Nothing happened there. We'll move on to today. He's actually off today. Played back-to-back -back days. He's off today. He'll be back in there tomorrow. 30 minutes ago, Salk asked Kelnick a great, concise question. I mean, how long did it take to get it out of his mouth? No, right. no, he, 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 was, he was on it. He said, hey, that's if a, baseball never. Enough. If, <laughs> <laughs> We're sensitive. Yeah. Sheesh. Okay. He said, if baseball never worked, what would you be doing? 
that's a question I throw out in the morning meetings. Really? Is it really? Do you yeah. know what he said? What did he say? If baseball what didn't work, what, what he said? Yeah, if baseball didn't work for you, right? It just, you know, baseball's a hard The answer game. is perfect. I hadn't really thought is. of it, but once he said it, it was like, oh, yeah, that works. I don't know. That's what, what I asked what, what job would Jared Kelnick be doing? He said he would be a Navy SEAL. Ooh, that's legit. <laughs> that is legit. Isn't that what he would that be doing? That is it. It is about as structured, like disciplined, getting after it every day. He loves the grind. Like that. That is it. Know yeah. thyself. Yes. Like he's got a pretty good sense of who he is yeah. and what makes him tick. I, I'm so fascinated by him, and I, I know we ask you a lot of questions about him, and I, and I think at times there's a sense that he's that there's a lot of questions about him because people don't trust him or. I just think he's fascinating. He's unlike most other baseball players. Mm-hmm. Brock was asking me for some comps. I said maybe personality-wise, almost like Cliff Lee, with that sort of straight-up intensity and, and narrow-minded focus. I don't know. That, we're reaching because there aren't a lot of guys. Josh Donaldson maybe uh, is another name that I came up with. How is his headspace right now? Uh, you know, it's probably as good as I've seen it. He's, you know, he's gone through a little adversity. Things haven't gone his way. Uh, I think he's learned from it. Uh, I think he's wanting to continue to grow. He knows he's got areas he needs to get better at, not just in the batter's box, but different areas about you know being a better teammate and, mm-hmm. and understanding what it takes to be a part of a winning team and whatnot. And he's embracing it. Um, he's looking forward to it. A ton of credit to him. He's worked very hard this offseason on his entire game and, and who he is as a person. He's growing up. This is what happens with young people, you yep. know. I've raised three kids that they have those moments that, you know, you scratch your head and you, you hope they, they grow out of it. And what's we're seeing, he's growing out of it. Um, he's in a really good spot. I'm really excited to hear the music today during batting practice. Mm. You know, some, you know, we switch it up about every other day, whatever. We have a different player and we had let guys pass on the who's in charge of the music today. And somehow it got thrown over to, to Jared. He was going to be in charge of the music today. And, and Gino piped up. He's like, hey, how come we don't have any Latin music on there? And he's right. You know, we got to mix it. So Jared and Gino got together, oh. put the soundtrack together today for today's BP. Ooh. So I'm very curious to see how that works out. I'm looking forward to that, And too. the reason I bring it up is like, uh, and, and Jared Kelnick is looking forward to that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? No, Gino's not going to be able to transfer the songs over. He's going to have to get the technical part of it. That's what Kelnick's there for. But, but Gino can sing. All Gino, will be Gino can today. sing. He can sing. He's ready to go. We have a uh, little band coming up here on Friday. We've got a little performance, group in the clubhouse. Mm. Gino's going to be lead singer. Does he have the best voice on the team? Without question. Wow. Although Harry Ford's coming in close second. Wow. Losers. But Harry Ford's multi-talented. He will play the saxophone in our band. Really? Oh, yeah. Who else is in the band? He's got skills. Can't give it all away. Yep. It all away. <laughs> Sorry. I don't elaborate. you, you got to get running to watch these guys. <laughs> uh, last question. You read much your reader you, you love mm-hmm. learning uh michael lewis guy oh, yeah. that, that i love mm-hmm. do you see his new little book he, and it's about an hour read okay. it's coach mm-hmm. and it's on the baseball coach at isidore newman high school in new orleans cool where he played and i'm telling you i'm going to bring it to you yeah, tomorrow nice. it's about a 40 minute read and almost verbatim you talk about failure you talk about fear you talk about authenticity mm-hmm. and this coach is like getting run out of new orleans right now because he's too hard on the kids right his his message and even though he's molded and everything else an amazing book, an amazing story. It makes me think about just managing, whether it's managing 17 to 20 year olds or 18 year olds or managing this cast of characters, you never stop growing. You really don't. And you you have to be able to evolve in any role, any leadership role. Yep. Uh, if you're running a, a big company, whether you're running the Mariners, whatnot, and, and understanding that things are gonna change. I'm much different now than I was you know, six, seven years ago. I, I've learned. Uh, I've learned that I, I need to uh, you know, change in, in certain areas and listen to players and mm-hmm. listen to coaches, and, and it has helped. It's helped the whole program here. Uh, you know, I still at spring training. The highlight of my day, as crazy as it sounds, is that half hour meeting I get to do in the morning. We don't talk about baseball. It's not about X's and O's. It's about the people in the room and and understanding their background and where they came from. How important that is. We had Colton Wong up yesterday. It's great. We did the intro, you know, the Hawaiian music, and he jumps out of his seat. He runs up there, and you start asking the questions about. And he talked about. You know, one of the questions I throw out there, what's been your hardship? What adversity have you had to overcome to get in this room? And he's had some. He told us about it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yes. then getting picked off yeah. to end a World Series yeah. game. He said he lost his mother, I yes. think it was, soon about afterwards. Yes. yes. Yeah. I and, mean, he's gone through it. Yes. And, but what that does, it just it, it, it locks in the entire room. And everybody walks out of there. You know who feels best when they walk out of that room? Colton Wong. He got a little vulnerable. His teammates recognize that they appreciate it. And now, all of a sudden, shoo, just sucks right into the group. It's, it's the beauty of managing and, and working with people. Then you just try to create those platforms. You don't always know what's going to come up. Yep. You know, we interviewed Hemerson Hancock this morning. 
from Georgia, went to University of Georgia, big Georgia Bulldogs fan. Uh, I asked him a question, one person, one celebrity in your life, if you could meet, who would it be? He threw out Kirby Smart on the spot. Yep. And Patrick, our crack uh, video crew running the program, I said, is there any chance we could pull Kirby Smart opening game, opening speech to the team before they went out for the national championship game? It was all over the Internet a few years ago. And we ran it up there just like that. And it's like, whoa, that's big time. You know what I mean? Some people may have liked it, some may have not, but it opens the door. Gino Suarez had never heard the speech. Now he likes Kirby Smart, so you never know what comes out of you, it. You humanize, and then you analyze. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you humanize, you connect, and then you kind of analyze where you're all at and how you all fit together, but that humanization is just critical. It's fun. It's fun. It, it is. It's, it makes the, it's why we do It's what job. we do with Salky, right? I mean, we just kind of humanize him. Yes. <laughs> Are you hard to play against? I hope we're getting harder to play against. I remember that was a goal when, yep. when we've talked to you over, what's now, what, eight years? Yeah. This is your eighth mm -hmm. year here, which is kind of hard to imagine. Yeah. It's, are you, it's, how, how hard are you to play against? Well, I think in, in two ways. First of all, um, for us, you know, it starts on the mound. We have guys with stuff. We have guys that go after you. We attack. You know what I mean? And we talk all the time about controlling the strike zone, dominate the zone, and you do that on the mound by go getting strike one, and we have guys that do that are not afraid. I think on the other side, you know, in the batter's box, you know, we didn't hit for the highest batting average last year, but we found a way to get guys on base. We were second in the American League in drawing walks. We created opportunities, and then in the second half, we figured out how to hit home runs, and that was pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> along the way, you start playing against teams, and you, you know people in the other dugout, and they're like, oh, man, we hate pitching against your guys. You guys, get, we get you down 0-2, 1-2, and it's foul ball, foul ball, ball. All of a sudden, you look up, we've wasted nine pitches, and then we walked a guy. You know, it's, it's a Haggerty. It's a Demo. It's a guy they're not really, like, that worried about. But all of a sudden, that guy, through doing those little things really good, changed the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, as a manager, it's something I, I, I wish, I hoped we could grow into. Certainly got to have the right personnel to be able to do that. You have a belief system amongst your organization that this is valuable. Guys buy in. It's working. We are uncomfortable to play against. I want to get as uncomfortable as we can. Part of that will tie into maybe the new rules, you know, and, and what we do there as far as, you know, being aggressive on the bases and some different things we're going to try to incorporate as the spring training goes along. But uh, looking forward to the season. I, I really am. Last year was great. But like I said at the end of last year, I said it to our team opening day, we're just getting started. You said you're happy not to have to answer any more questions about the drought. Go ahead. I'm happy not to have to ask any more questions about when this team's going to get into a brawl. After oh after god. last year, the question's been oh retired. Oh my god! I don't your... have to ask it ever again. Oh. It's now been retired. You won't ever ask that question again. Well, after 20 more years, maybe. <laughs> okay. But now I feel like you know we got to see what it did. It carried the Mariners to ending the drought. So I'm just saying. <laughs> that's what carried it. That's what. I hey, know, whatever. I'm whatever, just saying. Whatever you want to run with. All right, I'm we gotta go. With. Scott, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, last year really was fun. Thanks. Guys. And uh, really cool to see where this thing is going. And feels like the mission is still incomplete. And the guys are taking that real seriously. So it really. really are the last thing I want to throw out there before I jump off is that it has changed down here the number of people from the Seattle area the Pacific Northwest that have been to spring training early in camp and just so excited about this team and where we're going it's awesome to see um, it, our players have noticed I have noticed um, and it's 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 you know it's not just the little kids it's the the older folks that have been around and followed the Mariners for 20 some years and are so excited about this group so appreciate all their support and uh, Get them in shape, and we're looking forward to March 30th. That might be because of you guys. It might be because it's snowing right now. And see, I mean, like could, both could, both things could, could be playing yeah, a role could there. Be part of it. Scott, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Continue good luck, and we'll be right back. It's Brock and Salk, Seattle Sports on 710.